intro okay so uh, we'll be starting our next topic that is capacity plan so the topics that we are going to cover there we will see what is capacity planning okay capacity planning overview capacity planning elements what are the capacity planning elements we will see settings for capacity planning what are the prerequisites for capacity planning we'll see maintaining the available capacity what is available capacity and uh, we'll maintain it generation of capacity requirements how the capacity requirements will get generated we will see capacity evaluation how the capacity evaluation is done okay then capacity leveling if there is any overloads and underloads how to do the capacity leveling we will see then mass processing okay. and finally capacity requirement reduction so these are the topics we will be covering in the capacity plan okay so uh, a capacity availability check is not performed with mrp material requirement planning so normally when you run mrp system will not check the capacity availability check it will not do capacity availability check it means machine availability it will not do that okay capacity planning must be executed separately in a second step okay so normally they do this capacity planning as a separate step okay master data planned orders and production orders provide data that can be used to represent available capacities and capacity requirements so to have the capacity planning you need the master data all the pp master data and planned orders and your production orders okay so normally the main main uh, objective of this capacity planning is the capacity load of the work center should not be too high too high or too low in certain periods so normally all your machines should be occupied with a optimum load there should not be any overload or underload so that is the main purpose of capacity plan in addition the planned orders and production orders should be assigned to the work centers in an optimal sequence Okay. To achieve these goals, you can use various tools in S4 HANA for capacity evaluation and capacity leveling. Okay, so basically, we have two tools, two functions basically. One is capacity evaluation, next one is capacity leveling. We will understand these things in detail. Okay. So basically, the two tools we have is capacity evaluation, first function. Next one is capacity leveling. We will execute this too. Okay. Uh, on a broader level, capacity evaluation means you compare both your uh, available capacity with your requirement. Okay. You 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 compare the two. Uh, you, what is your available capacity and what is your capacity requirement? You compare these two. Okay. And wherever there is a overload and underload, you do the leveling. You make the capacity loads uniform. So for this, you have two tools, tabular planning table and graphical planning table. You have these two, we will discuss on this too. Okay. So basically we have two. Okay. One is, first one is the capacity evaluation. Next one is capacity level. Capacity level. You have two things. Okay. So this is the one. So basically, to have the what happens is we create work center first. When after creating the work center, in the work center we maintain the available capacity. We'll show you this in the system again okay and this work center is assigned to the routing okay we discussed this already then after that we create production order or planned orders so when you do that capacity requirements will get generated okay so you have your available capacity and you have your capacity requirement okay. then you do the evaluation evaluation 
and wherever there is overload underload you make them uniform using leveling using leveling. so this is what we are we will be covering today okay so that's how the capacity planning function works in the system okay so first we will start with the available capacity so this we discussed already during our work center class but let's discuss again the available capacity is the work that can be done by a capacity at a work center per working day so available capacity is nothing but how many hours a particular work center can work how many uh, how, how many hours it can work that particular machine okay you can store the operating time and the daily available capacity at a work center in a capacity in the work center okay so basically the available capacity is determined by work start and work finish length of breaks rate of capacity utilization and the number of individual capacities which the capacity consists of so we discussed this already available capacity i will show you this so let's go to the system okay so if you go to the system let's go to our product okay let me go to first thing so let's go to our product let me cleanse everything let me remove everything Okay, let me run MRP. The planned order also will go. I will move the requirement right. Okay, so now we have just a stock of 200. Okay, so now first let's discuss about the available capacity, how you maintain the available capacity. So let me take you to the work center. Let's go to the first routing. What is the routing we have? Okay, we have two routings we have two routings as of now what i will do i'll just deactivate this for the time being i deactivate this routing first one okay now let's go to the second one okay so we have second routing so in the second one go to operations so here we have only one one operation with setup and machine time and everything okay here also i'll make some changes let me go to change mode again. Select this, go to operations. Okay, so what I will do, I will put this one as zero as of now. Okay, so here what I maintained is to produce thousand bottles, it takes eight hours per day. Eight hours, not eight hours per day, eight hours. So here what we maintain is base quantity is 1000 to produce 1000 we need 8 hours machine time is 8 hours that's what we maintain okay let me save this first again i will go and now let me go to display mode okay now let's go to the second one go to operations so now here we have the work center okay so in this work center we will see what is the available capacity so let me open the work center C R zero. Okay, of course this we discussed already. Uh, or where I'm in the work center. So in the work center there will be a capacity step. Go to capacity step. Here you have capacity category. You need to double click this capacity category. So here, this is the place where you normally maintain the available capacity. Here you see. This is the place. If you see here. In the, in the in the capacity header normally this is the place where you maintain the standard available capacity this is the place standard available capacity so you maintain start time end time length of break and capacity utilization and number of individual capacities that's what it is referring to okay here you maintain the start time here this is what it is referring to start time end time length of break and utilization based on that it will calculate the capacity capacity 
I will show you this. So in the work center, in the work center, there is a capacity tab. In the capacity tab, there will be a capacity category. In that capacity category header, you will maintain this information. This information. That's what I showed you. If you see here, I'll go backwards. Okay, you have the work center. No. Again, I'll go to the work center. In the work center, in the capacity tab. That's what here. In the work center, capacity tab, capacity category. Capacity category is this one. 001 machine normally. You need to go to its header. So here, this is the place where they maintain available capacity. Okay, why it is grayed out means there is a reference available capacity. I will deallocate this. Now it is in grayed out mode. What I will do, I will maintain our standard available capacity. So let's say this machine every day they start at 8 o'clock. Okay, and they will end it, they will finish it at 6 o'clock. Okay, and there is a length of break of 1 hour. Okay, now we have to put this as 9 hours. Nine o'clock. So the meaning here is every day they start this machine, this work center at morning nine o'clock, and they stop the machine at evening six o'clock. And in between there is a break of one hour due to lunch, due to tea and snacks, all those things. So total machine operating time is eight hours. And utilization, I am going to utilize this capacity for hundred percent. And we have only one machine. That's why the capacity is 8 hours. That's how the capacity gets calculated. Suppose let's say if this work center is combination of two machines, then if you maintain here 2, it will become 60. 8 into 2, 60. This of course we discussed this already during our work center master data classes. But here only one line. So I'll put it as 8 hours. So this is how the capacity gets calculated. So 9 to 6 o'clock, morning 9 to 6 o'clock, total 9 hours. In that 9 hours, there is a break of 1 hour. So operating time is 8 hours. That's how it is maintained. And this 8 multiplied by number of individual capacities, that is a capacity. So this work center can work maximum 8 hours per day. 8 hours per day. Its capacity is 8 hours per day. That's how they will maintain. Okay. So let us go back. And then let's save this. I saved this. Okay. So this is how you maintain the available capacity. Available capacity. Okay. So now, so what is our so capacity evaluation? Let's capacity. So what basically they do in the capacity evaluation is they will compare capacity. Capacity requirement requirement with with available capacity. Build capacity. That's what they will capacity. So this is all. They they compare capacity requirements with available capacity. Okay. So let's see that. Okay. So now whenever you create any orders or any any planned order or production orders normally system will generate the capacity requirement that means you need machine hours okay so first of all i'll show you the capacity evaluation how to do the capacity evaluation in the capacity evaluations the capacity requirements are compared with available capacity that's what i explained just now. in the evaluation you compare your capacity requirement with your existing available capacity that's right okay so how to do this is let me let me go to the system okay so what is our work center here seven underscore 59 so to do the capacity evaluation what you need to do is let me open one more session go to logistics okay go to production open this here you see there is a folder capacity planning open that folder here there is a subfolder called evaluation open this work center view open this load cm01 normally okay double click you need to go to this transaction cm01 capacity planning selection here you need to enter your work center so for this work center i want to see the i want to do evaluation enter the work center planner group who is a person responsible for it and the plant enter that 
Now you need to click on this button, standard overview. Click on that. Now you see, now as of now it is showing in the weekly format. Okay, here you need to understand now. Okay, uh, let's do one thing. Let's go to device. So as of now it is showing week wise, huh? weekly format. I'll change it to daily format. Then we will discuss. So go to settings. It is showing week wise. Let's go into the daily period, daily format. Day. I selected radio button T. Now continue. Yeah. Now it is showing device. Okay. Here we need to understand. This is our work center. Okay. Work center uh, description. Okay. This is a plant and this is a category, work center category and its description. That's okay. Now, first one here it is a day. Day. Date. Okay. Now, next one is a requirement. We are here. Okay, so normally the first column will be the period. First column will be the period, whether you want to see it in weeks or days, that's what. Okay, week. Second column is your requirement. What is your capacity requirement? Second column. Third column is your available capacity. What is your available capacity for that period? Now load percentage of this. Okay, out of your total available capacity.